Hi everybody, it is Vivian Stamatopoulos here. I'm going to give you a short demo on how to record your lectures and then to make them visible to your students. So the first thing you're going to do, and I've already done that, is log into Blackboard. And the second thing you're going to do, which I'm not going to show you right here because I've already downloaded the software to my Blackboard interface, um, but I provided the step-by-step -step instructions as well as a link to video instructions on how to download Kaltura onto your course interface. So use those first steps in order to download Kaltura Capture, and then when it's downloaded and you have the My Media folder here, then you're ready to go. And at that point, you're going to go into whatever course it is you're teaching that day for which you want to record your lecture. So I'm just going to choose one of these random courses for my winter semester that I've yet to um, personalize here. But generally, you're going to go to this content folder. And I always relabel this to lecture recordings, just so it's really obvious for students where to find those recordings. But uh, in the interim, you're just going to click this folder. And you go to Tools and you scroll down till you see Kaltura Media and you click it. You're going to wait a couple seconds and I already have recordings here because I've been recording for a while but you probably won't so you're going to hit add new right here in order to start a new recording possibly your first recording. You're going to scroll down and always select Kaltura Capture and it'll take a couple seconds for it to pop up. And if for some reason it doesn't, you might just need to re-download it. Sometimes a different screen comes up, but in this case, if this one comes up, you just hit new recording and this is what you should see. So either this will pop up automatically or you'll see the um, you know, black screen we just saw and you just hit new recording. Either way, this is what you're looking for right here. I always make sure that the screen and the audio button are selected and you can tell they're selected because they're highlighted in blue. And I always make sure the wide viewing angle and high density flex view display is selected. I don't choose the integrated five camera because that's if you're recording your actual face, but I prefer the students to see the lecture slides and to hear my voice. So you would select this option if that's what you would like as well. And then essentially you just gotta make sure you have your slides ready to go, which I always do. And you'll hit the start the slideshow after you press record. You'll get a three second timer and then essentially you're off to the horses. So you're recording whatever is being projected onto the larger screens in your classroom or on your laptop, as in this case right now, my lecture slides. So I'm just going to pretend I have finished the lecture at this point. But what you always want to pay attention to is this little ticker in the bottom right hand corner. I always like to you know, glance at it every so often throughout the lecture just to make sure it's still going. And you'll know it's still going because you'll see the ticker counting away and that red pause button will be highlighted. Now, sometimes, and as I point out in the section on what can go wrong, I've noticed that the recording can just surreptitiously stop at times. And generally, I find that that is connected to those times when I navigate outside of the slide deck. So particularly if I'm opening a hyperlink to a video or to a website, that's when problems can happen. Now, it doesn't happen all the time, but it has happened maybe five, six times, I don't know, over my four years of using it. So it's not a lot, but you still want to pay attention because you don't want to lose that recording. Sometimes I even tell my students to pay attention to it when I navigate out of the uh, slide deck. And sometimes they've been the ones to notify me that this whole area down here will essentially be grayed out. So the ticker will have stopped and nothing will be bolded here. And in that, if that happens, just make sure you hit save. You'll have the option to hit save. So you've saved whatever it recorded to at that point. And then you're going to go back to where we were just a minute ago and restart a new recording, AKA your part two. So let's just pretend everything went perfectly as it is now. We're going to hit stop recording. Are you sure? Yes. And then you don't have to necessarily relabel it here because you're going to have, as you'll see, another three opportunities to relabel it. So I generally just hit save and upload and call it a day. And you'll see here, you'll pay attention that it'll start showing you the percentage of uploading and it'll tell you when it's at 100 percent. And you have to wait till it's 100 percent to then go back into my media for your next step. So we're at 10 percent now. Usually this takes 
not more than a minute or two. Um, even when I do two, three hour long lectures, it really doesn't take more than five minutes, if that. And also it depends on, you know, how connected you are, your uh, wireless connection, all of that good stuff. So right now we're at 33%. And we're just waiting. This is about the time that I pull out a chocolate bar. Maybe have a snack. Should I say granola bars are healthier? Am I being secretly judged by everyone listening at home? No? No, you'd never. And I should also probably note that I would make this small talk to you when I'm with my students waiting for this to upload. Generally, they're running out of the class at this point. 66%, and I'm going to take a guess and say the next time, yep, 100%. Okay, so at this point, you might miss the ability to hop up here and hit click here to review and edit, because it goes away pretty quickly, but no need to fret. You just go back into My Institution, your main page, and you go into My Media. This is where all of your recordings will be, and you have the chance to edit. So now in this case, um, I've already edited all of these, that's why it says published, so I've edited it and saved. But it takes sometimes a few minutes for it to transfer from the step we were just at a moment ago to here. And you can hit refresh a few times if you're impatient like me. But generally, the difference will be that here it'll say private instead of published. But in any event, you'll do the same thing. So you'll go into these two options. If you want to delete it, you can delete it. Uh, or you go to edit. So you would go into this area. And here you have another chance to relabel it. But don't worry, you'll have yet another chance. So you can leave this as it is. But what you really want to do here is if you want is to maybe um, you can trim the recording. You can add some thumbnails, captions. And you can play around with it. Timeline, replace the media options. I generally don't do much here. I just save it. But you can play around with it and do what you'd like. But in any event, you have to save it regardless. And it'll tell you it's been successfully saved. So let's just go back into my institution and go back to the folder we were just at. Because I'm curious to see if it has now uploaded the recording we just did together. Yeah, there it is. So you see, it'll say private, but it still looks similar to the other ones. The only difference being I have not yet gone in there, edited it and saved it, and then it'll convert to published when you have. So you need to do that in order to move to the next step to make it available to students. So we'll just go through there again. And this, you know, you can relabel it if you want, but you don't have to because you'll have another opportunity to label it again. But the key point is to make any edits you need up here and to save it. And it was saved. So now this is the next step, the step about making it available for the students to see. So you go back into the course that you've chosen, go back into the content folder, or you can relabel it lecture recording folder. And now I scroll right back down to Kaltura Media. You'll be able to do this in your sleep in no time. And then they pop up. So there it is. So you're going to hit embed. So now here's your final opportunity to label it. And I really say don't waste your time labeling all the other files because this is the one the students will see. So maybe you just do like week one. I'll just put it December 10th because that's today. Happy holidays, by the way, hey, everyone. And you can add some comments here if you want the students to know anything. And then there's also this uh, nifty little area here where there might be times you don't want the students to view the content. So you can click no. Uh, you can track the number of views. And if you want to be really particular on visibility, you can choose to display the recording after and before a certain time. So you have those options. But in any event, you have to hit submit because that is what is going to make it available to the students. And there you go. So they'll be able to go in, click play, and they'll see exactly what we see here. I think that's pretty intuitive. That's pretty much how to record and post a lecture, and your students will love it. So I really hope you make use of this. Just always pay attention to navigating outside the slide deck in case your recording stops, and then you just re-record a new one, and you put a two-part series for that particular week.
All right, everybody, I wish you a very happy holidays and a wonderful new year. I hope this helps you. Have a great day.